advanced today's lecture is divided in three parts in section 1 we will be overviewing this course series as a whole in part 2 or section 2 we will be discussing the faker dynamics facts about the machine and a summary of patient factors for better cataract outcomes will be discussed in part 3 before we start the course there is a little urdu poetry jaanchte hain parakhte hain khojte jaate hain hum aankh ko har zaviye se sochte jaate hain hum aankh ka binai se manzar ka apne aks se rishta nazuk sa hai lekin jodte jaate hain hum motiya band aankh se hum chura lete hain yun मोतिया बंद आंख से हम चुरा लेते हैं यूं अदसहाय चश्म को जोड़ते जाते हैं हम एक अक्से मुंतशिर को देखना है मुर्तकिस रेजा हाय आईना जोड़ते जाते हैं हम शीशा घर ठहरे हैं हम गिरे शीशों की जिया सांस रोके दिल को थामे खोलते जाते हैं हम सो दिस इज माय पोएट्री एज यू कैन सी वेरी वेल ओनली एन आई सर्जन कैन राइट सच काइंड ऑफ पोएट्री here we come to the part 1 the feco cataract course basics and advanced it starts today that is 1st august 2019 and goes up to 28th of november 2019 consists of 15 lectures we have divided these lectures in four categories so how did this idea came it occurred during a discussion with professor nadeem hafiz bhat a real leader and always open for the innovations and ideas he invited me a lecture on any topics on feco and then during the discussion we both agreed to the point that instead of one hour lecture we should conduct a full feco cataract course and over last 20 years or so i had been engaged in feco cataract training and live workshops at various levels which helped to accomplish this task and uh, compile these 15 lectures in all to serve this task and another good thing happened that we started pondering with the uae and uh, australian based organization with the name of online summit.org to record and stream online and then make it available online as a recorded presentation and optimus pharma but kind enough to provide sponsorship for online cloud hosting and streaming and we are thankful to optimus pharma who are the sole distributors of swiss advanced vision coming up with innovations in lens designs and especially eed of extended depth of focus technology multifocal iols thank you optimus optimus pharma for this landmark webinar series so as i had mentioned already the course is categorized in four categories in category 1 there are four lectures under the heading of feco cataract basics in category 2 we are going to discuss again four lectures on difficult and complicated cataracts with other comorbidities in category 3 there are four lectures on feco complications their prevention and management and in category 4 there are about three lectures in ir related issues category 1 the lectures include overview of the course and knowing your machine and the patient that is today 1st of august and then the second lecture on 8th of this month will be on minimizing surgeon induced errors and role of non dominant hand in feco cataract surgery and on uh, 15th 
we will miss it because of feed and then on 22nd of august there will be discussion on wound construction and closure capsular rexes and hydro dissection and similarly it will be followed on 29th of august by nuclear cataract nucleus and cataract uh, cortex removal of and iul placement and centration so that will complete our faco basics then the second phase of the course will start with the difficult and complicated cataract faco patients in this we will be discussing first the hypermature and milky cataracts and dense brown cataracts then there will be a lecture on dealing with posterior polar cataract and how to handle the siliconized eyes it will be followed by management of weak zonules and then a discussion on management with other comorbidities like glaucoma uveitis trigium and small pupil and in cataract category 3 we have put the faco complications the first lecture in this faco complication or faco accident management series will be overview and prevention and management of the faco complications and then we will be in the second lecture in this series we will be dealing with capsular complications and anterior vitrectomy techniques and the third lecture will be on dislocation and uh, subluxation of nucleus and cortical matter in the vitreous and vitrectomy techniques and finally we will be dealing with the drastic prevention and management of drastic complication of endophthalmitis the fourth category there are three lectures which are related to iul and its issues the iul implantation and centration has been discussed by that time already in the basics and this is actually related to iul complications like repositioning and iul exchange which will be followed by scleral fixation and haptic externalization techniques discussion and a final lecture which will be number 15 and 28th of number will be on premium iul practice with this we are going to complete with the calendar of the discussion you can find this calendar it starts from 1st of august and goes up till 28th of november and you can find this course online with at the as we already discussed with the courtesy of optimus pharma this is being hosted and streamed online by faco cataract dot online summit dot org so you just click this web address and you can find the find the whole calendar so the section 1 is completed and now we move to section 2 of this today's discussion that is on faco dynamics and faco machine as you know these are the terms faco power irrigation aspiration flow and vacuum and in 1962 to 65 charles kelman a very famous eye surgeon from usa and a great musician which of the helmic community we cherish and proudly owns visited a dental surgeon and during scaling of his teeth he got this idea why not use this same ultrasonic technology to emulsify the hard nucleus and the story of the faco emulsification began this is a schematic diagram of faco machine itself see there is an uh, irrigation line and uh, drip chamber is full so that there is no air then there is irrigation pinch valve and uh, there is a pump in the console of the machine which generates vacuum and this irrigation line combined with an aspiration line goes into the faco hand piece the irrigation line goes into faco sleeve actually which is of silicon material with two holes 180 degrees apart for the irrigation fluid into the anterior chamber and the aspiration line is through the aspiration port right in the ultrasonic faco needle so this is a rough picture 
you see the fluid coming into the anterior chamber and coming out of the anterior chamber is controlled by the FECO machine itself. The FECO machine consists of the console, the tubings and connection wires, the foot control, and the FECO probe or the handpiece. So these are the four basic ingredients by this FECO emulsification process is controlled. The first So we were on this FECO console. The console consists of a computer which controls all the functions of the machine. It contains hardware and software. The computer generates ultrasonic waveform through an electrical wire which is con connected to the FECO handpiece. So the settings can be all configured on the console of the machine and they show the maximum output which can be achieved through these particular settings. The pumps by which the vacuum is generated, first let's clear, what is this vacuum? You see the idea was got from scaling of the teeth by Charles Kelman. But the teeth are a fixed tissue. For any hard thing to divide it into pieces, you have to fix it. So how to fix this very fragile lens of the eye, cataract, where you have to preserve and save the capsule and the zonules, but you have to take this hard nucleus out. This, this is where the concept of vacuum came. Vacuum is a holding power. You hold this nuclear piece or nucleus itself with the help of a vacuum. And then you use your other hand by chopping or divide or conquer and then once the nucleus is divided into small pieces or piece then you again hold that piece with vacuum and then hammer it and emulsify it with the help of ultrasonic power so vacuum generation and control is a very important part of a machine so this is generally carried by peristaltic pumps venturi pump and diaphragmatic pump what is peristaltic pump? It is generated by a wheel with knobs, which rotates and compresses a special tubing. And thus, by this compression and pushing the fluid forwards, it generates certain aspiration vacuum. So this is peristaltic pump. And then comes a venturi pump, which is based on compressed gas, which passes through a hollow tube and is connected to the FECO tubing itself. And this rapid passage of compressed gas gives rise to vacuum generation. And in venturi pump, as you can notice, the vacuum generation is in instantaneous and it rapidly rises to the highest level and it is always there. Whereas in peristaltic pump, the vacuum generation is more related to occlusion of the tubing. Whereas in venturi pump, there is no discrimination between vacuum and aspiration flow rate because both are working together. So this FECO handpiece is connected to the machine with the help of a special tubing, which carries very important role. The quality of tubing is very important because in vacuum generation and during the passage of the fluid aspiration and irrigation, both the quality of the tubing should be good. It should not collapse or expand under pressure. So that's why the special tubings are used and they have made the control and life easy for surgeons. So this is the rise time 
as you can see in peristaltic pump it is gradual and in venturi pump it rises very rapidly this is a fake hand piece as in the schematic diagram we noticed there is an irrigation line there is an aspiration line and the irrigation line ends into a sleeve with two holes on the sides and the aspiration line is the in the middle of the fecco needle itself which is known as fecco tip as well and it has an electrical wire through which it is connected to the console of the machine with certain sensors and microprocessors how does this fecco probe work there is a piezoelectric crystal which vibrates under electrical stimulation through the console of course controlled by foot pedal which we will discuss later the frequency varies from 30000 to 60000 hertz generally 40000 hertz different probes have different number of crystals ranging from 2 to 4 more the crystals better the stroke length and better the output the fecco tip is very important which is made of titanium and is hollow with the distal opening which functions as an aspiration port as we already discussed the acoustic energy produced along with ultrasonic hp hand piece is then transmitted onto the fecco tip the angulation of the tip varies from 0 to 60 degrees the zero degrees is just straight easy to occlude and 45 degrees which was initially in use it was difficult to occlude and hold the piece so mostly the tip being used is these days is 30 degrees because it gives both the beauty of rapidly easily occluding the tip to generate the volume vacuum and as well as it helps shaving and sculpting so as we discussed 30 degree is the recommended tip these days the more beveled tip is the better shaving and cutting ability it has and the more straight it is like 0 degrees and 15 degrees their holding power is better then comes the fecco sleeve it is a silicon material which covers the titanium tip and it has 180 degrees apart two side holes and it is attached to the uh irrigation line and it serves to irrigate the interior chamber and maintain the depth of interior chamber and it also keeps the fecco needle covered so that during the vibration once the heat is produced it is also dissipated by the silicon sleeve and then there is a kind of part of the fecco needle which is exposed beyond the silicon sleeve that's important the harder the cataract the more exposure is given to the fecco needle and the softer the cataract the more of the fecco needle is covered by the silicon sleeve piezoelectric vibrator is mainly used as we have already discussed and it produces this high vibration and oscillations produce cavitation and uh, because of the production of bubbles it creates shock waves which helps to emulsify the hard nucleus after the of the cataract and the heat is produced as a side product which is dissipated and controlled with the help of fecco sleeve and the irrigation line then becomes a very important part with the name of fecco foot control or foot pedal it controls infusion aspiration and the fecco power as you can see in the 
illustration in position 1 irrigation starts in position 2 aspiration and in position 3 the feco energy itself starts delivering and generally the machines have imparted certain tones by which a surgeon can very easily differentiate at what stage he is and this is the basic principle which is followed by all the modern machines these days but once any machine is offered to a surgeon he needs to get comfortable with the foot pedal control first so this is a general principle the first step is irrigation the second step is ia infusion aspiration and the third step is iap infusion aspiration and feco and the feco is generally linear the more closer we go to the ground and its lower part the more energy is being produced and after discussing the basic feco parts these are the general terms which are used sculpting which is known as a kind of shaving and producing a tunnel in the center of the nucleus the message here is that the tip should not be occluded it should not be dipped down into the nucleus because if the tip is occluded then the vacuum will be generated we don't want nucleus to move as a whole at this stage so this is sculpting then the fluidics to control fluidics the modern machines have microprocessors there is surge protection inside the machines they have very good sensors the microprocessors are there then the special irrigation lines are used some surgeons recommend transfusion sets as irrigation lines another term is used is aspiration flow rate so this is very important because in peristaltic pumps aspiration flow rate is actually giving rise to fallibility and vacuum generation fallibility is once the tip has approached or a piece has engaged into the tip to keep it there so that it can be hammered and emulsified it is known as good or bad fallibility so again dividing and chopping and emulsification all depends on the holding power which is imparted by the vacuum itself so ultrasonic power can be generated in a continuous linear fashion as we discussed already you keep on pressing the pedal in third step the more power will be generated and pulse power is a kind of cycled power which is generated by the for example if we have given 10% cycle it may be power is generated for 10% of the time and 90% of the time there is no feco power similarly this cycle can be customized and then there is hyper pulse power and the burst power as well the concept is that the power is given in pulses and bursts with intervening intervals so that the tip doesn't get hot and at the same time more feco energy is delivered to emulsify harder nuclei of the cataract as we have already discussed the power can be delivered in a constant mode in a linear fashion similarly it can be delivered in a pulse mode with intervals and it can be auto controlled by the feco machine console effective feco time is calculated when the real feco power is delivered to the inside of the interior chamber to emulsify the lens so effective feco power lesser it is lesser are the chances of feco burn the experienced surgeon gains the lesser effective feco time comes irrigation line is generally gravity driven there should be no wound leak the ingress and egress of the fluid should be all in control of the feco, feco machine and because it is gravity driven so it is controlled by the bottle height which can be motorized in some machines 
aspiration is evacuation of the fluid through a closed system so quantity of the fluid pulled out of the eye per minute is known as afp aspiration flow rate it is cc per minute whereas the unit for the vacuum is millimeters of mercury so we have already discussed that negative pressure which is induced in the aspiration tubing is the vacuum or the holding power once the tip of the tubing is free of the piece after emulsification there can be sudden surge so there are many sensors these days and venting mechanisms to take care of this sudden surge in modern machines which can work up to a maximum vacuum of 600 mm of mercury and still they don't let the chamber collapse it all occurs with venting and microprocessors what the factors in surgeon's control are flow rate compliant tubes tighter wound and one can raise the bottle height the venting is a safety mechanism which is comes into play again to control surge and suction of the unwanted tissues into the phaco machine in section 3 we discuss few patient factors which will of course follow in the our later discussions as well so who is the ideal phaco cataract patient with less than plus 2 or just plus 2 sclerosis the vn in the range of 618 624 and with good fundal glow so that the rexis can be undertaken in an effective manner too soft and too hard nucleus are not good for beginners then for any patient we have to assure good visual potential by we can rule out marcus gun sign there should be no rapd retinal examination oct and b scan can also of tremendous help in assuring the expected visual outcome of any particular patient and the eye generally prominent eyes are easy to operate as compared to deep sunken eyes for the beginners in pre phaco evaluation the corneal endothelial status becomes very important specular microscopy we all know is the ideal test but specular reflection test is a very simple thing a kind of forgotten art these days it can rule out corneal gateta the principle is very simple the viewing angle and the illumination beam they the visual axis of the uh, patient should bisect the illumination beam angle and the viewing angle of the observer so it is based on the principle of simple reflection the angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection the maximum light will be available to the microscope and to the surgeon concerned and if he can rule out this orange peel appearance then there is no corneal gutata the co if in the presence of corneal gutata the risk of corneal decompensation with phaco becomes high and one needs to take extra measures and experienced surgeon is needed to handle these situations then we need to grade the sclerosis the maturity hypermaturity and hardness of the lens we have to rule out phaco donosis so that there is no zonular laxity we have to assure that the zonules are intact and healthy and there should be no pseudo exfoliation syndrome again experienced surgeons can handle all these problems with certain advanced measures with this we come to end of today's discussion which was mainly introduction of this course and uh, the phaco dynamics and few basic things about choosing an ideal phaco patient thank you very much for your attention shishagar thehre hain hum gir hain shishon ki zaya saans roke dil ko thame kholte jate hain hum thank you very much